peace of Christ be with you, my friend. Well, in this video, we shall be reflecting on the parable, the wise and the foolish builders. It is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 29, and it is also found recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. Let's have a look at what the parable has to say. Jesus narrates this parable by saying, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and bit against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sin. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and bit against that house, and it fell with a great crash. In this parable, Jesus talks about a wise man and a foolish man, that is, a true Christian and a false Christian. Both men think that they are true Christians. Both think that they are building their houses on the rock. But the second man is fooling himself. These two men built the same kind of house. Their houses looked the same. There was only one difference. One had a foundation and the other didn't. The first man dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. The second man built his house on the ground without a foundation. This parable teaches us an important truth, that is, the difference between a true Christian and a false Christian cannot be easily seen. False Christians are like the false prophets, as we read in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, which says, Beware of false prophets, which comes to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. So false Christians are like wolves in sheep's clothing. When you look at them, you get deceived, because they seem just like sheep, that is, like true Christians. What is the most important thing about a house? Of course, its foundation. No matter how excellent a house looks, if there is no foundation, the house has been built in vain. Men need foundation also. And for men, there is only one sure foundation, Jesus Christ. We read very clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, which says, No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is, Jesus Christ. The false Christian who built his house on sin supposed, I am safe, I am a Christian, my house will not fall. Well, Satan desires to give men false security in this way. Judas, the disciple who betrayed Christ, surely supposed at first that he was a true disciple, but from the beginning he was a servant of Satan. Let each of us examine himself. What kind of house we are building? If our greatest desire is to get security, comfort, peace, then we are building our house on the sand. If our greatest desire is to know Christ and to be like Him, then we are building our house on the rock. The false Christian seeks his own good first of all. He does not seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Jesus clearly says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. A false Christian lives to please himself. He seeks God's blessings, but he doesn't seek God. He loves God's blessings, but he doesn't love God. He never becomes a true Christian because he does not put Christ first. He does not make Christ the Lord of his life. He does not make Christ the foundation of his life. His house is built on sand. The true Christian is the one who knows Christ and obeys him. He hears the words of Christ and puts them into practice. 
To know Christ is to love Christ. To love Christ is to obey Christ. For we read in John chapter 14 verse 21 wherein Jesus clearly says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. He is the one who builds his house upon the rock. So, how can we distinguish between these two houses? Usually, we cannot tell them apart until the rain, streams and winds come upon them. Only then will the house built on sand fall down. It is the same with man. Only when trials and troubles come can we tell who are the true Christians. God allows trials and temptations to come upon us in order to test our faith, our foundation. Jesus asks each one of us, When trials come, will your faith remain firm? There are three kinds of trials, the rain, the streams and the winds. The rain stands for various kinds of trouble such as persecution, loss of property, loss of health and finally death. These are the trials that come from outside us. The streams stand for worldly desires, that is worldly pride. These are the temptations that arise within us. By these two kinds of temptations, outer and inner, Satan tries to overcome us. First Satan tries to make us love the world. Then, if we refuse, he persecutes us. The winds stand for Satan himself. If the first two kinds of trials fail, Satan attacks us directly with doubt and fear and despair. These are the flaming arrows Paul mentions in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Our shield of faith is Jesus himself. Our faith is in the precious blood of Jesus Christ which has redeemed us from the power of sin, death and Satan on the cross. So dear friends in Christ, God will test each Christian's foundation when the rain, streams and winds come. If we are wise Christians, having Jesus as our foundation, as our rock, then we will surely stand all the rain, streams and winds which comes our way. But if we don't have Jesus as our foundation, then we shall surely fall down when rain, streams and winds come. So let us earnestly pray that Jesus be our foundation, that Jesus alone be the rock of our salvation. Amen.